Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at creating some cool sci-fi weapon effects. So, let's go and take a look at what we're going to be creating. So there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff in this tutorial. We're gonna be showing you how to create a lot of these little effects and tons of little tips and tricks. So even if you're not doing some sci-fi effects, I definitely recommend this tutorial. And uh, let's go and break it down. So we've got some uh, muzzle flashes, we've got some displacement, we've got some sparks, uh, we've even got some lighting on the side of the gun. It's a very uh, high-tech, uh, futuristic gun. And of course, we have Sam Loya. Wait, that's not Sam Loya. Actually, he wasn't available, so I ended up filming myself for the tutorial, and uh, this was shot on a green screen. I just replaced it with a warehouse. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if the weapons of the future had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and maybe social networking. Now, for this tutorial, we don't need to use any third-party tools, but I will be using the free Color Vibrance plugin, so you should download that from the tutorial page. Now, I am going to be using some shockwave effects from our product Shockwave, but you can also use the free shockwaves from our recent tutorial. So definitely check that out. Some really cool tips in that tutorial as well. And uh, I think that's it. Let's go and jump in and get started. All right, so I've got some footage here of me uh, drawing a gun and uh, pretending to fire. And uh, we'll go ahead and drop that into a new comp. Now, I'm going to go ahead and move forward to right before the gun kicks back. I like to put my muzzle flashes right before the recoil. So we can use page up and page down to uh, find that. And then we're going to create a new solid. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a white solid. And we'll call this muzzle flash. And then we'll hit OK. Now, I want to trim this down to a single frame. So we'll grab these, shrink it down so it's just a single frame just like that. Okay, so I want to draw a basic muzzle flash shape. So we'll shut the eye switch off and we'll take the pen tool. And we'll come in here and uh, we just want to draw sort of a generic muzzle flash shape. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit F and bring up the feather properties for the mask and let's just feather it out a little bit. Then we'll come over here to the effects and presets. I'm going to type in fractal noise. And let's drop that onto our solid. And this is going to add a nice uh, fractal noise. Let's set the blend mode to none. And then we'll clean up the edges from being a little faded. Now, for the settings here, uh, you know, we can turn up the complexity a bit. Maybe we'll set it to dynamic progressive. You guys know I like to do that. Invert it. Add a little contrast. Maybe turn the scale up and turn the detail up. Now we can move the fractal noise effect by grabbing this interior icon and just kind of finding a nice spot for it. Now let's add another effect called radial fast blur. And we'll put this after the fractal noise effect. And you can see it kind of creates a nice directional kind of blur, radial blur. Let's set it to brightest. Now we want to make sure that they're parallel. So let's pull this back in line with the back of the gun. So we want to make sure that that looks like it's going the right direction and maybe turn down the brightness a bit. So that looks pretty good and we can always tweak this, turn the brightness up and such. 
But now I'm going to add some colorization using our color vibrance effect. So we'll type in uh, vibrance and we'll take the VC color vibrance effect and uh, drop that in there. So right away, this is looking pretty sci-fi-ish. Now I like to turn on the fill empty background and then set the whole layer to screen. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. I might turn up the amount of the fast blur and maybe change the color to blue. Now this is something we could change to anything that we want. We could play around with this point, and maybe move it over a little bit so that that bright spot in the fractal noise looks like it's coming out of the gun. So we could potentially just shift that over a bit. It's always good to kind of look for natural areas that seem to blend together. Now, another thing I might do is duplicate this and put one right here in the beginning, and I might even offset the evolution. And I'm gonna select the mask and delete it. Then I'm gonna hide the layer and I'm gonna draw my own mask shape around the interior of this gun. We can turn it back on. Then we can hit F and feather it a bit. Now we might turn the radial fast blur down just a touch. And we can also play around with the contrast if we want to make this more or less, you know, turbulent essentially. But this is going to give us a little bit of motion. We can also play with this evolution to find a more interesting version of the primary muzzle flash. So I think that's pretty cool. And then what I might do is duplicate it one more time, slide it over, and for this extra copy, let's change the evolution and maybe hit F and change the feathering a bit and then take that whole mask and maybe just kind of shift it forward a bit. Turn the brightness down. We're sort of just trying to create like a residual sort of flash. Okay, so let's go and take a look. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, I wanna add one of our shockwave elements. Now, the shockwave elements have some really cool detail, and there's a bunch of different ones, so feel free to experiment with some of the different looks. I'm gonna be using shockwave number 19, and as I said before, you don't have to use the product shockwave. You can also check out the shockwave tutorial and uh, create your own or even download the project file, and once you render out one of those, you can just bring it in just like this. So we're gonna take shockwave 19, drop it into our comp, and we'll set the transfer mode to screen. And we'll also take our vibrance effect, drop that on to our shockwave element. So we'll slide this over. Maybe I'll time remap this. So we'll choose right click time, time stretch. And we're gonna set it to maybe 25. So it'll be a lot faster. And then we'll slide this over. And let's change the color to blue. Now, I wanna make the middle a little less distinct, so let's take the ellipse tool and just draw a simple shape around the core and then hit F, feather it, and then subtract it. Maybe we'll feather it a little bit more. So this is the basic idea. I might scale this up a touch. And already, this is, uh, this is looking really good, so I'm gonna move this into position. We can even turn it into a 3D layer, so if we toggle the switches, make it a 3D layer and then rotate it a little bit so that it's kind of perpendicular with the gun. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll go into the VC color vibrance, bring the gamma down a bit, maybe turn the brightness up, try to make that a little punchier. All right, so we're using a single shockwave effect, but in order to customize these effects and create a bunch of different looks, I had to experiment with some different ways of using the shock waves. So I came up with some cool techniques that might just blow your mind. So I'm gonna take a quick sidetrack from our current tutorial and I wanna show you just some cool ways to customize some shock wave elements. So let me take one of the shock waves, drop it into a new comp, and here we have just a cool element. Now what I'm gonna do is speed it up by choosing time stretch and set it to 50 and that'll make it easier to see the effects of the next recipe. Okay, so we've got our shockwave element, then I'm gonna come over here and type in polar coordinates. Drop that on there, and turn up the interpolation. What this will do is turn it into sort of a linear effect. 
and then we can start adding some more effects. So let's come over here and add motion tile. And we'll throw that on here. And what this allows you to do is repeat the edges by tiling them. So if we set it to 50%, that'll create two repetitions of tile. But here's the cool thing. I can come over here, type in polar coordinates again, and reverse the linear effect. So let's set it to rectangle to polar and crank up the interpolation. So now we have a radial effect again, but the difference is we've added the motion tile. So here's 100% and we have our single shock wave, but at 50% we've repeated the edges and we've also kind of added a little bit more detail. But the one problem here is that we toggle the switches, the effect is a little bit smaller and that's because the polar coordinate effect sort of compresses the image. We can fix that with a transform. So let's type transform, throw that on after the motion tile, but before the second polar coordinate effect. And let's go to the transform and let's uncheck uniform scale, set the scale to 200. So that way we're bringing that scale back in as we turn this on and off, we're gonna have the same basic size, except now we're repeating the edges using the tile effect. So how cool is this that you can actually change the repetitions of a radial effect? Right now the shockwave explodes outwards, but what if I wanted the shockwave to explode inwards? How would I do that? Well, here's what we're gonna do. Let's go to the transform and let's set the scale value to negative 200. Now we can look at this and we can kinda of see that it's exploding inward. Maybe we'll set this to negative 100 and we can kind of see what that looks like. But we need the help of one more effect, and that's the offset effect. So we'll take the offset effect, put it before the transform, and we want to adjust the vertical position. So here's what we'll do. Move this down a bit. And we want to just move it down until our effect doesn't look so stretched out. So here it looks right now. I think that looks pretty nice. Let's add the color vibrance effect. Add some colorization. Maybe we'll do uh, some fiery orange. That's cool. So let's set the transfer mode to screen and then duplicate the effect. And then let's reverse it. So well, we could just turn all the effects off except for the color vibrance. So now we can see we have our inverted shockwave along with our normal shockwave and we created a really cool two-tier effect. Now our radial shockwave might be a little bit big. We could probably either scale it down or shift the position using the offset and then actually scale it down as well. Just be careful. You don't want it to get too bunched up in the middle. So just shift it away and then you can either scale it down here or just scale the clip down entirely. Now if the outer edge is a little bit too harsh like it is here, we could do two things. We could do what we did earlier, which is just simply remove the effects and add a circular mask and subtract the core. And then when we turn the effects back on, you can see that this feathering will actually affect the entire clip. So maybe we'll hit MM, turn up the expansion, add the feathering back. Oh, and the other thing to do is anytime you're working with transparency, crazy stuff, just go to the color vibrance and turn on fill empty background. And that way you actually get a slightly more filled in colorization. So really cool. We could maybe just scale this, uh, hit F9 to uh, ease it into the keyframe and just, you know, scale it down. I'll come over here. We've got all of our other shock waves. So remember where there's 50 different shockwave elements. Well, we could go take both of the elements, hold down Alt, and drag another shockwave on top of it, and it'll actually replace it. So now it's shockwave number one. And now we've got a really cool combination. So we've got the inside and we've got the outside that are being comped together to create a really cool look. And again, we could tile this outside one. We can go to the tile effect, set it to 50%, and now that's got more detail. And anytime you change the tile amount, just make sure, so if it looks kind of stretched, just go into the transform 
and play around with the scale until that value looks more uh, you know even. But again, I think I think the 50% looks nice. So you can definitely do a lot of cool stuff with this basic idea. And uh, you know, simply switching the effects out are going to you know give you some different results. So we've got the inverse of the shock wave mixed with the outside shock wave. Very cool. Let me show you what we're actually going to be doing. So this is just kind of an exploration in using these elements as well as your own elements with some of the different effects. But what I want to do is something really unique with the shockwave. So I'm going to duplicate the current shockwave and check this out. I'm going to uncheck the 3D layer switch and I'm going to right click and reset the transform. So right now it's two dimensional. I want to make it three dimensional. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to type in the polar coordinates effect, drop that before the color vibrance, turn that up. And then what I want to do is unmultiply it. So right now it's got a black background. But I'm going to set the alpha to only. And what that will do is get rid of the black and just give us a white alpha channel. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to type in CC cylinder. And so we'll take the CC cylinder effect and apply it after our color vibrance. And now we have a 3D cylinder. We can actually create a camera and we can rotate around this and we actually have a 3D effect. So right away we can do some fun stuff. So let's just delete the camera and use the transform inside of the rotation. So let's just rotate this negative 90 and maybe over a bit. And maybe we'll turn the radius down a bit. And let's move the position to kind of line up with our gun. So let's unsolo this go into the cylinder and we'll just shift it over here a bit and we're going to want to rotate this as well that looks pretty good and maybe turn the radius down a bit so this is going to also be somewhat of a shockwave element so if we, we you know we can move it closer to the camera to make it larger and we can just kind of rotate it till we get a nice angle that matches our shot and so if we look at one of our original examples you can see this element that kind of spins and I've done it using the same technique. So I've taken the element and I'm going to animate the rotation. So we could do that by keyframing it. Set a keyframe, hit U, move forward and just kind of rotate it. And then hit F9 to kind of slow that keyframe down. And you can see in this example, it starts out and it actually gets bigger. So we could do that just by keyframing the radius and turning it up a bit and hit U. We could hit F9 and kind of slow that down a bit too. Now let's colorize this. So we're going to leave this color vibrance effect here to unmultiply. So if I turn this off, what's going to happen is we're going to lose that backside effect. So let me see if I can find a way to show you this. Without this on, we're only seeing the front side of the cylinder. But if we turn this on, we can actually see the area underneath it so you can kind of see how that looks. Now one thing about the cylinder effect it does have some shading but let's set it to 100% ambient and 0% for all of the other values. And that way it's just pure white. So now if we come over here and type in vibrance again let's throw that on here and let's fill the empty pixels so that we don't lose any of our illumination and let's set this to blue. Maybe brightness up a bit. And we could also play around with the position of the cylinder. So, uh, you know, it could be a little tricky since we rotated it to get it to, you know, move in the right direction. But maybe we keyframe the X position, hit U, and just kind of slide it over. We just want it to kind of move a little bit in the right direction. And of course, we can just move the whole layer too if we want to just adjust the entire position. Maybe we'll start it out even smaller, turn the radius down to like 10. Maybe slow this rotation down, let's see. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. It looks a little bit slow, so I might just shift it over and crop the front of it off just so that it 
kind of gets into the effect a little bit faster and looks more like residue rather than the actual effect. All right, let's go and start customizing a little bit more. I actually have a comp of some sparks that were created inside of Particular. So I'm just using uh, a couple of different particle you know, forces like wind and turbulence to just kind of create some wild particles. Um, there's a bunch of different tutorials on Video Copilot for sparks. So I won't get into this, but pretty straightforward. But this is also just another thing that you can add. So for example, I can just add these sparks into the comp, slide it over a bit, and set it to screen. And even though they're a different color, I think it still looks uh, pretty cool. Now, let's do a few more things. Like, for example, our muzzle flash is a little bit dull. So let's see if we can brighten it up a bit. I'm going to come over here and type in glow. Drop that onto our muzzle flash. And let's put the glow effect before the color vibrance effect. And let's set it to screen. And then if we increase the size of it, we can actually make it nice and bright, maybe even go into the vibrance effect, turn the gamma up, and maybe even turn up the brightness, let's see. I think that looks pretty good. Nice and powerful, maybe take that second copy, we can even brighten that up so that we get a little bit more life, a little bit more movement. You know, your eye's always gonna kind of follow that secondary movement. All right, so these are our visual elements, but I also want to add some cool distortion effects. Let's add a new adjustment layer. And a couple of the effects I've been using, the ripple effect, let's throw that on there. And let's set the layer, so let's just trim the layer down. And we can hide a few of the effects by soloing the top and bottom layer. And let's just turn the radius up. So we can kind of see this is a cool deform effect. We could turn it to symmetrical, turn up the height, and we could just create some cool kind of warping. Maybe turn the speed up, maybe the width a little bigger. So depending on the radius, maybe something like that. And so what we can do is align this with the gun, and maybe we could show all the layers now. And depending on how we want to do this, we could put this below the muzzle flash. I think that looks kind of cool. It kind of gives a little bit more depth, like it's distorting on the plane. But maybe we take the shock wave and put it below the distortion. So we'll click on this and type in distortion. And these are all just, you know, choices you can make. We'll set this to uh, red. You know, you want to put the distortion below, above, you know, play with it until you see what you like. But what I'm going to do is take the height and keyframe it and hit U. So now I've basically, an F9, I'm basically fading out the distortion. And maybe I'll change the speed to like 4. So that looks pretty cool. Maybe add a little bit more so it kind of fades out, nice residue. Now, you don't have to do this, but I am using a few elements from our Action Essentials 2 pack. I do highly recommend this pack. I know we do try to show you alternatives to doing a lot of stuff, but for 100 bucks, you can really get some great organic elements that you can combine and mix with your final comp. So that's actually what we're doing with these muzzle flashes. We're actually gonna take the smoke residue after the effect and composite. So let's take muzzle flash number two, drop it in here, and I'm actually going to take the front of it, the muzzle flash part of it, and I'm going to just cut it off. So now we're just kind of left with the smoke, and uh, we could scale that down a bit. So the smoke layer I might put above the distortion, and this will just give us just a little bit of residue. And we could even slide it over just so that we see just the tail end of it. The nice thing about explosive effects is that they don't really need to fade on. And in fact, fading stuff on actually makes them feel weaker or softer. Whereas in this case, we want them to kind of pop on really dramatically. And, you know, of course, we don't want them to be too intense, but it's a little bit of smoke. I think that looks nice. The other thing I did for my example was I added another distortion effect called bulge. So we'll take the bulge effect and we'll scale up the shape. So just make it nice and large. And then turn the taper up, which is going to just clean up the interior edge here. 
and then we can just keyframe the bulge height. So we could set that maybe 0.7, keyframe it, move forward a couple of frames, and then set it down to zero. And we could put it before the ripple, after the ripple. These are all things you should kind of experiment with. The nice thing about the bulge is it really gives you a powerful hit right when the explosion goes off of the gun. So even if we turn it down uh, to a lower value, it just kind of racks the whole frame and uh, you know it looks really nice. And of course, we could do a negative bulge, which could be interesting. It's kind of like sucks the fun out of the shot. Um, a couple of other fun ways to customize this. So if I take one of my shock waves and say duplicate it, I might just come over here to polar coordinates, turn this up, and remember I've got a linear effect now. So let's turn off the 3D layer switch, scale it down. And so like in one of my examples, I just had sort of like a stream of particles that was kind of left over after the initial shock wave. And you could use this to sort of simulate that and maybe duplicate it and rotate it, the rotation tool here. And uh, here's what that might look like. Maybe I'll take these two and change the time remap on them to like 50% so that they have a little bit more, you know, depletion so that they fade out a little bit slower. So line that up with the gun a bit. You might rotate these effects too so that they actually align with the, you know, with the gun and stuff like that. So again, these are just little tricks that I actually used in the original example. So I wanted to kind of show you. So just like that, I've just taken a shock wave and used the polar coordinates effect to straighten it out basically. Now you'd think with a gun this powerful, they'd at least give me some goggles or something so that I'm not going blind every time I'm shooting this radioactive gun. Um, here's another quick thing to just kind of give you some ideas. Like if you look at this one, this is a really crazy gun, right? But this effect is actually not that complicated. So let me show you just the basic idea behind that so you can kind of start looking at ways of creating your own. So again, I always try to encourage you guys to you know, experiment and play around with different ideas. I'm just trying to give you enough of the idea so that it makes sense. But here's a really cool way to create that sort of, you know, plasma type of weapon. So let's create a solid. And we'll call this plasma. And uh, it doesn't matter what color solid, but what I'm going to do is add the ramp effect. I think it's called gradient ramp in CC. So there we go. And this is going to give us a simple gradient and then we're gonna add the colorama effect and let's change the output to ramp gray nice and then we'll turn the cycle repetition up I'm not sure let's do like four and then we'll go to the input phase and animate the phase shift so this will actually kind of animate this and we'll alt click on it we'll type in uh, time times you know negative 200 so it just creates a little bit of a, an animation. And we can change the direction by just doing times 200. So we'll see what looks best. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add a curves adjustment just to dim it out a bit. And then we're going to add the CC cylinder effect. So check this out. I'm going to rotate this. Is it negative 90? And then rotate on the X. Actually, maybe on the Y, we'll rotate it this way. Maybe we'll screen it back on top here. So now you see where this is going. So this is really, really cool. Now this plasma gun needs to go in the other direction, or it needs to go a little faster, right? It's a little slow. So let's hit U. Let's set the value to time times like 500. And just to explain this expression, it's just taking the current time and multiplying it times 500 so that it basically just goes faster. And then I'm just taking the radius of the cylinder and turning it down. And then maybe taking a copy of it, duplicating it, going to the scale, scaling it in a bit, a little bit lower so you can kind of see just those two copies together. And what I could do is change the speed value, so do three, so that way 
they're not at the same frequency. And just so you know, depending on what frequency you put this at, sometimes it can actually look like it's going backwards or it's going too slow. So you really just have to play around with the, you know, it's only like six or seven frames. So, all right, let's try 600. So that's cool. And we could even play around with the phase. So for example, we could go and change the output from four to three. And then we'll make three copies. But how do we get it to look really cool and kind of warpy um, like we see in this example? Well, here's how we're going to do that. We'll take one of the copies and let's add the CC glass effect. Now, I'm sure the tutorial is getting a bit long, but I want to show you all the cool little details. So we'll take the CC glass effect, throw it on here. So if we change the bump map to none, it'll actually use the input source. So then what we can do is change the height to negative 50 and maybe soften it up a bit. Play around with the displacement here, let's see. Something like that, it's kind of looking interesting. Undo that real quick. So again, this is just, you know, experimentation. You just want to play around with these uh, with these values and just kind of see what, what looks cool, what looks interesting. Here is the big thing that we have to do. So we've got the effect. We could, of course, add our vibrance effect. And we'll set the fill on and set it to blue. Copy that and paste it to the other copy. So we'll take these two copies and we'll pre-compose them. So we'll select them, hold down shift, choose layer, pre-compose, which is just off the screen there. And we'll call this plasma. And again, you can just duplicate more copies, do all sorts of stuff here. Let's set this back to screen. And then we're going to create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to add the glass effect again. CC glass. And for this effect, we're going to choose the plasma layer as our source. Then we're going to take the glass effect and put it all the way at the bottom so that it's only affecting the bottom layer. So now you can kind of see what the glass effect is doing. We're sort of displacing the background a little bit. So if we crank that up, maybe add some more blur, maybe add a little bit more height. You know, negative or positive, whichever one looks cool. And we can actually start to see the background becoming displaced. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then we could take the plasma here, maybe add some glow to it. Make sure it's set to screen. And, uh, and there you go. You can, you know, go into the glass effect, maybe soften it even more to just really distort the imagery in the background. And that's really, you know, the idea behind this. And of course, I just have several copies on top of copies uh, kind of doing the same thing. So now another thing I might do is duplicate it. And maybe instead of the colorama effect, maybe I could just add a fractal noise. And, you know, really kind of create this sort of Let's see, stretched out noise effect like that. And you can kind of see, let me put the curves after it, how some of those other effects came together as well in this example. So you just have like some stretched out fractal noise uh, mixed in as well. You know, you could just go turn the gamma down on some of these so that they're not so intense. And that'll just make the effect a little bit more subtle, a little bit more believable. And of course, on top of the entire effect, we could do that same thing. We could put that glass effect right on top, maybe before the glow, and uh, set that to none, and just kind of set it to a negative value here. I mean, even that is kind of a wild looking uh, effect that just doesn't look like anything that, you know, is recognizable. It's just kind of a cool, abstract, high-tech looking effect. So who knows? Experimentation, that's the key. So let's take a look here. All right, so this is looking really good. Uh, the last thing we could do is maybe add a little bit of high-tech lighting to the side of the gun. What I might do is take my footage and track it in Mocha. So we could do animation, track in Mocha AE. And we'll hit OK. And the basic idea is to go forward right to where it's going to happen. 
and we're going to draw some shapes. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit here. And we're going to draw a shape right around the side of the gun. And then we're going to track backwards. So just kind of, you know, we can do it by hand actually because we're not going to. That's good. We actually don't need to track too much. I think that's probably enough. And so now we're going to export this. So let's go right to the frame right before it moves and choose Align Surface. Now, in the later versions of Mocha, you can right-click on the mask and choose Align to Surface, and that'll do the same thing. And then we could choose that shape and choose Export Tracking Data. And we're going to export this to Corner Pin and Copy to Clipboard. And then we jump back into the After Effects. I'm going to create a new solid, and we'll call this uh, Lights. And we'll go forward to the beginning and choose Edit Paste. There's only a few keyframes, so right here you can see nothing's moving, but up here everything is moving. So we could throw a grid effect before the corner pin, and we could see that. So maybe right here. And let's trim that Alt Begin Bracket, or just uh, trim it over forward. Right when he shoots, we're going to turn it off, and we'll get rid of the grid effect. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hide this layer, select it zoom in and we want to put this down below right above our gun and then we'll take the pen tool go to full res we'll just draw some basic shapes in here so we'll draw like some grooves and then we could add a couple of horizontal lights we could take that and duplicate it might even add a couple of uh, circular ones right here on these cores and we'll turn that effect back on. Now I can see it's a little bit offset so if we move it over to the surface that we aligned it to we can actually tweak these and uh, just move them over just to line up a little bit better. So anything that we do on this one frame should track to the rest of the frames. And if we want to add a little bit of motion blur we can actually do that using the the force motion blur. Then I'll actually add some motion blur. We can turn the shutter angle down a little bit. So now we want to illuminate a bit. So what are we going to use? Yes, the free VC color vibrance effect. And we'll turn on the fill empty pixels. Set this to screen. And we could do, you know, pretty much any color here. We could, uh, you know, we could just do red. Turn up the turn the gamma down. So it's cool is that when you lower the brightness, it actually keeps that bright red color. So maybe we could add a glow right after the color vibrance effect. And you can just see how that looks very natural the way that it's blending. One of the things you might notice in the original examples is just as the gun fires, the light, it lights up. And then right when it fires, it turns off. And that does that to conserve energy. But also, I didn't want to have to track the gun after it shoots because it's moving around a lot. So I just made that up so that I wouldn't have to do the work. And that's the truth. So I can actually just kind of shut this effect off right when the muzzle flashes start firing. And no one's the wiser. So... That's basically the way we can do the effect. Now, if we want to animate these on, uh, we could turn the motion blur off for just a second. And, you know, we could do it a couple of different ways. We could add some masks and maybe subtract them. And just do a quick keyframe of the path. Slide it, let's see. So here we just have them sort of turning on. Let's reverse the order here, so we'll just... Slide that one there and slide it back. And let's take a look. Sweet. Very, very cool. So this is really all there is to it. I know there's a lot of uh, various steps, but I didn't want to leave anything out. Hopefully you guys can pick and choose the things you like the best, customize it with your own effects, come up with some really cool looks, and then uh, make your next sci-fi movie. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Um, of course, we used our new Motion Pulse sound effects collection 
to create all the different uh, sci-fi effects. So if you're looking to add some sound effects, definitely check out Motion Pulse. My name is Andrew Kramer. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time.